Today's scripture reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 6 to 11. You can follow along in your bulletin. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. May the Lord bless the hearing of the scripture and Pastor Earl's preaching. Dear Heavenly Father, will you uh, do all that you can in our lives to impress that scripture lesson upon us? And Lord, I uh, seek a blessing upon the words I'm about to share, that they honor you and bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I, I want to start with a really neat story that also happens to be true. And this is the story of an elderly woman who was quite up there in years. And she lost her husband, and so now she was a widow. Well, in, in, in those couple of things, uh, she discovered that she was now more restricted in her activities than at other periods of her life. She just couldn't get out of the house as often as she used to. But she still was eager to serve the Lord. And so she went into prayer about it, and for three or four days she prayed about what she could do. Uh, and this thought came to her. While she realized she could no longer get down to the church as often as she liked in order to serve through the church, nor could she walk the neighborhood and visit with friends and neighbors and invite them to come to church on Sundays, she could still play the piano. And the piano was sitting right there in her living room. So the next day, she sent a, a, an advertisement, a, a promo, if you will, a want ad, to the Oakland Tribune newspaper. And it simply said this, pianist available to play the piano for any lonely and despondent people over the telephone. She gave her telephone number and she invited people to call that phone number and that these uh, moments of concert, if you will, were going to be free. Well, the very first day she got one call and then she got three or four the next day. And after a while she was getting eight or ten phone calls a day from lonely people or people who were somewhat depressed just asking her to play a hymn. When, when the call came in she would ask them, what, what is your favorite hymn? And she would play that hymn and after a while she'd get talking and visiting with these folks. And, and after several months she had over 500 people having called her at home to hear her play her piano and to visit on the phone. She said, it was the best ministry of my entire life. Isn't that neat? Yeah. I think that is so neat. What I think is so neat about that is, here is a person restricted in what they were perhaps able to do, but using one of their talents, using a learned skill to continue to serve the Lord in ministries that were pertinent and meaningful to others. Well, this week we continue to study the commitment that we Christians make when we join the church. For those of you that have been in Sunday school or small groups, maybe you're doing the study at home on your own. You're here on Sundays to, to hear what the message is concerning that uh, book called A Disciple's Path and the study materials that are in that. It mentions that there are five tools that we can use as disciplines for our lives. And if we get better at those five things, then the church can be strengthened. Those five things are up there. It's, it's uh, to be people of prayer, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Now, for the next two weeks, we're going to take a look at that fourth tool, which is the tool of service. Today, what I want to do is to open up in your mind the fact that you have abilities within your own hands, within your own personhood, is abilities and talents and skills that you can use to help advance the kingdom of God. That's what we're going to talk about this week. And next week, 
Uh, Reverend Dennis Robach is going to be back here. If you remember, Dennis helped begin this whole series back in January when I was having my surgery, and he came in here and he preached on the subject of prayer. And you all so appreciated him that I decided to invite him back and to come back, and he's going to talk about a biblical concept called spiritual gifts. And did you know that each and every one of you has a spiritual gift? God honors you with that gift. Well, he has helped lead people in his congregations for the, all the years he was in ministry to come to understand that. So he's going to be a really good leader to help us fall, flow into that uh, next week. So that's our plan for the next couple of weeks. Did you know that God has a plan? You know that? His plan includes using your talents, skills, and spiritual gifts to help his kingdom on earth move forward. I like what Jim Harnish says in the book, A Disciple's Path. He writes these words, the, and, they're, and they're actually printed there in, in the white lettering. The infinite, almighty God chooses to accomplish the transformation of the world by working in and through the lives of ordinary people who become the agents of God's love. Isn't that neat? Now, a little later on in that chapter, he goes on and he says this. Let, let's throw these words up on the screen. I am confident that the Almighty God is fully capable of saving, redeeming, and setting right everything that has gone wrong in this world by God's own power. I'm sure that God's kingdom could come and God's will could be done on earth solely by God's own power. But, but the God revealed in the Bible is the God who chooses to bring that kingdom to reality through the gifts and energies of ordinary folks such as us. That, for some folks, is a big secret. They didn't know that. But I hope for all of you in here, you have at some point in your life come to realize that God uses you for his kingdom. I am a firm believer that God has given me some special talents, even some, some spiritual gifts, so that I can be a part of his work here on earth. Now, for example, uh, God has given me uh, some natural born talents, yeah. some talents that I was just born with. Yeah. One of those is I have this mouth that seems like every time I open up this mouth, words come out. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore, I use that talent in my ministry. I also have some learned skills. Every Sunday, when I step up to the podium to preach, you need to understand that this does not come naturally to me. It is something that I have had to learn over time. I also have spiritual gifts. I've taken that assessment online that I've shared with you. I've taken that. Uh, every other year, we pastors are supposed to take that. So I've been taking that for a lot of years. And consistently, year after year after year, one of the spiritual gifts that, that comes to me through that assessment is that I have the gift of teaching. As a matter of fact, if you paid attention to my preaching, you'll know I'm more of a teacher than I am a preacher. Why? Because that's one of my spiritual gifts. Now, the reason I mention that is because the same is true for you. You have some natural-born talents, you have some learned skills, and you have at least one spiritual gift that God has given to you to use to help God with the workload, His workload, right here and now. But you have to make a decision. You need to make a choice. You can use them for God to give him glory through your talents, or you can choose not to use them. Now, here is a, visit, a, a video that sort of speaks about this choice. It's one of those deep thoughts from a shallow Christian video that I introduced to you uh, last fall. Oh, you started it already? That's okay. Keep it going. God has blessed each of us with special gifts and talents. There are as many different kinds of talents as there are people, and it is important for us to exercise the particular talents God has given us. Just make sure that when you use your talents, you do it somewhere no one can see you. I mean, if someone saw you using your talent, they might think it was your talent and not God's, and they would be led astray. So if you're a singer, never sing for God in public, only at home, alone. If your talent is teaching people, don't teach Sunday school or any school. 
Just teach imaginary lessons when you're alone. God didn't give you talents to use them in the real world. He gave them to you so you can keep them a secret and only share them with Him. These have been Deep Thoughts from a Shallow Christian. From a Shallow Christian, absolutely. That video, of course, is a humorous jab at how often many of us make excuses to not use the talents or gifts that God has given us down here on earth. I think I've discovered two big excuses or two big reasons why we don't use our talents more fully. The first one is this. We don't think our skills or abilities are really good enough to be used in and through the church. I have heard it said many times, and I have heard it said by some of you, and you know who you are because you've said it directly to me, some of you have probably said it in your heart, okay? But some of you have said it directly at me. You have said, I don't have any talent that God would, give, would, would use. I've got no talent that God would use. Well, I want to tell you something. I've discovered something. You're pretty much wrong. God is our creator. And the way I read it, God doesn't make junk. And God is our creator. And he created you with talent. A few years ago, a man uh, just happened upon a garage sale and he paid five dollars for an old oil painting that had been wrapped up in a blanket. Now, he didn't know too much uh, about it except it, it, it had a nice theme, ripening pears it was called. Well, a few years later, that painting that he had bought for $5 at the garage sale, he sold for a million bucks. He had taken that painting. By the way, the woman who sold it to him said it had been sitting up in the attic for like 60 years. None of the family had ever paid any attention to it, so they just threw it into the garage sale to get rid of it. He hung it up on his wall in the kitchen. Ripening pears was a great place to put it. Uh, in the kitchen. He hung it in the kitchen there for about two or three years, and then he decided perhaps what he needed to do was to discover if there's anything about the artist, a man called Joseph Decker. So he, he, he googled Joseph Decker, and he discovered that Joseph Decker was one of the premier artists of the 19th century, and that this painting had been painted in 1884 and lost. And now he had the original. The National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. bought it from him for a million bucks. The painting was not valuable because of where it was found. It was found in a garage sale. It was not valuable because of who owned it. Who owned it was a 29-year-old unemployed actor. The reason the painting was valuable was because of its creator. Joseph Decker. And you know, you know that same concept is true for you and me. It is not who we are, nor where we live, nor who our parents were. It's not about our education or our job that makes us valuable. What makes us valuable is who created us. What makes us valuable is our Creator and His work in our lives. And I think that's pretty cool. You see, we are valuable, and our skills and talents are valuable because of who our Creator is. I showed you a video two or three weeks ago, and it's pertinent to this very same point. So let's watch that video again. Go ahead, Rusty. From the dust of the ground, God formed man and breathed into him the breath of life. When the Israelites were trapped with their backs to the sea, Moses stretched out his staff and the waters were parted. Samson struck down a thousand oppressors of Israel with the jawbone of a donkey. the blast of trumpets and a war cry, Joshua watched the walls of Jericho crumble. With torches and empty jars, Gideon and 300 men defeated an army of 100,000. 
David chose five smooth stones from the stream. And with them, he struck down Goliath. 5,000 were fed with only five loaves and two fish. If God can use such small things to change the course of history, certainly he can use you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God can use you? He can use the stones of David. He can certainly use you. Here's a second reason why we don't freely use our gifts and talents for the work of God. Many of us haven't dedicated, it, haven't dedicated them back over to our Heavenly Father. Now, here's what I mean by that. What I mean is that we've never thought to give them back to God. We've never asked Him to bless our skills or to use them as He sees fit. I don't think we see the big picture that God has for us. Otherwise, we would more readily give Him our gifts. The story is told of a man who was taking a stroll along a country lane, and he came upon a little quarry, and there were some workers in the quarry cutting stone. So he went up to a couple of them, and he asked them all the same question, what is it that you're doing? And he asks the first man, and the man looks up with pick in hand, and he says, can't you tell what I'm doing? I'm cutting rock. He goes up to the next man and asks the question, what is it that you're doing? And the man says, uh, I'm, I'm working for $15 an hour so I can put bread on the table. He goes up to the third man, and the third man looks up and, and lays down his, his pick and actually gets out of the quarry and comes up to the man, dusts himself off, dusts the limestone off of him, and he says, do you really want to know what it is that I'm doing? Well, if you do, then I'm going to tell you. I'm helping to build a cathedral for God. Now, it's all a matter of perspective. It's all a matter of whether we see the big picture or not. Yeah. The first man couldn't look beyond his pickaxe. Second man couldn't look beyond the next payday. But the third man had looked beyond those and had looked into the mind and the vision of the architect. And in, in whatever large or small way he could, he was going to contribute to that vision and he was going to help build a worship center for his God. It is uh, all in how you seek to approach the gifts that your Creator has given you. It's all in how you approach it. Here's another illustration. A, a young boy, oh, maybe 12 or 13 years old, by the name of Jimmy, decided, he got in his mind, he decided that he was going to be the, the most famous seller of cheese in all of Chicago. So he, he gets his, his little pony cart, and his little pony named Paddy, and some milk that he had bought from a local farmer, and he made up this cheese. And then he started to walk the streets of Chicago, trying to sell his cheese. He did this day after day, and week after week, and sold very little of his cheese. Even though he worked hard and he put in long hours, so one day he's thinking about all of this while he and Patty and the cheese in the, in the little cart are, 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 are walking down one of the roads in, in Chicago and he suddenly stops and he turns to Patty and he takes her face in his hands and he starts talking to his horse. And he says, Patty, I think we must be going about this all wrong. We're not doing it right. I'm afraid that we have things turned around and our priorities are not what they ought to be. Maybe we ought to serve God first and sell cheese second. So the story goes that he, he, he took Patty home with him and that very day he sat down at the kitchen table and he wrote out a covenant with God. And the covenant was, God, from this day forward, I am going to uh, serve you first. Turn to you first, and then you just use me however you want. Years later, as little Jimmy becomes Jim, 
He stands before the congregation at his church, North Shore Baptist Church in Chicago. He was the superintendent of the Sunday school. And so out there in the seats were, there were little children as well as teachers and youth and adults. And he was talking to all the Sunday school department. And he said this, I would much rather be a layman at North Shore Baptist Church than the head of the largest corporation ever. Isn't that neat? Here's the rest of the story. The next time you take a, a bite of Philadelphia cream cheese <laughs> or, or bite into a slice of DiGiorno pizza or slurp down some jelly or, or make a batch of mac and cheese or lick the, the, the filling out of an Oreo cookie. Remember little Jimmy and his horse named Patty and a commitment that he made to serve God first and do everything else second because to him serving Jesus was most important. By the way, in the food industry, he's known as James L. Kraft. Today's lessons are these. First, trust God that he is the great creator of your life and God doesn't make junk. Therefore, your gifts, your skills, and your talents, no matter how small you think they are, can be used by God to move his kingdom forward. And second, decide that you are going to dedicate your skills and your talents to God. That will open the floodgates for God to use you in bigger and better ways. Let God's Spirit flow through you into the lives of others through service and ministry. And watch what happens. Watch. What happens. Let's bow for prayer. Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father, oh, help us to understand that it is through you that we have value, and that it is in you that our gifts and graces and talents and skills can be made manifest and used fully to your glory. May it be and may it happen. Dear Jesus, amen.